Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm back with another Clojure video and today we're going to talk about how to use a SQLite database from Clojure. If you were following my previous videos about uh, some Clojure project setup where I was using uh, mostly Postgres, uh, today uh, we will uh, have SQLite as a lightweight alternative but it can serve you long way uh, if you start a hobby project you can use like a SQLite database as your main database for your single instance deployment uh, for a long time and it will handle quite a lot of traffic for your web application so the setup will be quite similar to what I'm using with Postgres uh, the only bits will change the driver uh, for the SQLite uh, and we will cover all this uh, setup uh, once again. So what I'm going to use is uh, Clojure 11. Uh, actually, the Clojure 12 was released, so I can use that as well. Uh, but anyway, Clojure doesn't really matter here. So for configuration, uh, we're going to use error. And then for the comp uh, component to manage uh, the system, uh, then this is the bit that is new, and it is a uh, SQLite GDBC driver. Uh, then for ge uh, generic GDBC operations uh, with database, uh, the next GDBC library is uh, a Clojure standard nowadays. Um, Hikari CP is not really necessary uh, if you work with a SQLite database, you can just use a single connection, uh, but uh, the setup, as you'll see, uh, is really easy to do with a pooled connection, and Hikari CP is a nice uh, connection pool, so it's, it's good to use. And also, I think uh, in SQLite, the writes, I think, are threaded, uh, as I understand, but reads could be concurrent, so uh, a, a read-heavy application can potentially benefit from a connection pool anyway. Uh, then uh, the final one is Flyway uh, for migrations. Uh, I know there is a Migratus library in Clojure, which, which is like a pure Clojure library that you can use as alternative to do migrations, but I'm really used to this Flyway Java library and I use it quite a lot at work and for my hobby projects and it just works fine. Um, the thing I like about that is uh, for the migration names, you can just use something like v1 and then go uh, manually increment uh, the file names. In Migratus, as I remember, you have to put a, uh, like a uh, timestamp uh, to start and it like it will avoid collisions, but uh, it's, for me, uh, kind of hard to read uh, as a human uh, the list of migrations and, and their order. So. Uh, that's the setup. Uh, let's take a look through uh, into some configurations. So we will go to the uh, core namespace and here uh, uh, the system start is really simple. So we have our build system which will build our component system and now in the system we only have one database component and we pass the entire configurations configuration there. So the config comes from Ira and we use this IRA read config and then we point it to our config.edm file uh, and it's really simple so we only have a db top level key and then the only thing we need for uh, gdbc uh, spec is a gdbc url and as you can see here we're using in memory sqlite uh, if you want you can easily switch it here to use a file uh, file system uh, database or you can do uh, profiles with uh, Ira. And for example, for production, you can set it to be a file. And for local or test, you can set it to be a memory. So in that case, you don't need to spin test containers uh, and manage your, for example, Postgres more heavy database engine separately. So that's the configuration. Moving to the component, uh, it's in a separate namespace. And here, uh, the next GDBC actually provides a really convenient way to create uh, pooled database components for the uh, Clojure component library. So as you can see, I'm using this connection namespace from next GDBC, and there's a, a helper function uh, component, and it basically will create a, a component compatible uh, dev record, uh, and inside it will have a pulled connection and you can specify type here so I think Hikari, Hikari CP is supported and uh, C3PO I believe uh, so here 
the last argument is uh, database configuration, and I also enrich it with init function. So this init function will be called once the component is starting up, and it's really handy to hook things like database migration. So when your application is starting, when your system is starting, as part of the data source uh, database component creation, we'll run flyware migrations. So here is a bit of Java interop uh, to uh, configure our flyway uh, migration. And basically, you need to pass the data source, which you receive as a part of this uh, init function arguments. Uh, this will point to our SQLite database. And then you say that location for the migrations will be in the class pass database slash migrations. And that lives inside the resources folder. So we have the migration file here, uh, just a simple, simple one, a single uh, table creation called users with ID and name fields. And yeah, uh, then the table uh, for the version schemas, uh, this is uh, internal information for the uh, flyway. It will store some metadata about which migrations were successfully applied in a a table called this. You don't have to create it ahead of time. So this is the setup uh, about the tests. Um, there is a test uh, namespace as well. And here an example, uh, what you want to do with your system, one of the ways to uh, create a, a system fixture. So the idea here is that we're using the dynamic uh, var uh, to store our system under test. And uh, this is the uh, function with system that will be used as a test fixture. So the idea of the test fixture is that uh, you will receive a test function that you need to call, but around that you can do whatever you want with your environment, right? So here we'll do the binding of the test system to uh, actually reading the config, building the system and starting the system. And then we actually running the test function and in this case, we use each. Uh, that basically means for each dev test, uh, this fixture will be called. So uh, before we even running the uh, body of the test, uh, we will uh, create our test system. And what that allows us to do, as we kind of storing the system in a dynamic var, we can actually get our database or potentially later other components of the system if we need. Uh, from in the test. So now we started the system and we have access to the database. And uh, as we put our migrations as part of the component, we don't need to do any extra setup here uh, because our database will be started and then migrations will be applied. So that's why I'm able to do insert into table users straight away because the table is already created by the migration. So in, in this case, you have a really powerful way to set up your tests and set up your environment. And with uh, SQLite, what is really nice is it is in memory and really lightweight in the tests. So you don't have to uh, keep your database instance running. You can actually uh, start and stop it as you need in each test, and it will still be pretty fast. In uh, Postgres, uh, compared to that, uh, we usually start, a, uh, what I usually do is I do test containers. So I have a reusable container running the database, uh, but then uh, I need to apply migrations each time. And before each test, I need to truncate the entire database so I don't have mm, test data from the previous runs. Uh, but here we don't need to do that. And the test is really simple. We do the insert query. And then we do a select uh, with the same ID and we make sure that we're getting the same data. So let's uh, run that and see if that works. I need to start the REPL, but um, while that's starting, I can run it from the uh, CLI. Uh, so I'm using the this test runner, Coacher. And as you can see, assertions passed. Now I should have my REPL running. If I reload the namespace and run the test, we should see a green thing here. If I change and fail it, uh, we now have a fail test and we can see that now it's not matching. So that shows that entire thing is working. 
So I believe this is really useful. Now I'm working on some hobby projects and I'm using SQLite as my main database. So I'll probably gain more experience to share uh, with how it's uh, to work in a real environment. Um, but until then, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you're interested to see more code uh, or some like read the code, I'll share the link in the description to the GitHub repo uh, where I pushed the, the, entire, the entire source uh, code for this uh, example. So check it out. Uh, please leave comments, uh, likes, and ask questions. See you next video. Bye-bye.